purchased this radius tool off of Amazon and basically what you do is, is you loosen all of these locks and you start finding a radius and as you find the radius you start tightening them so then you can put it on your piece of wood that you just cut mark it out and uh, and then trim it and start to test do your test fits now I left a few inches on each side because anytime you're working with radiuses you gotta go in so you gotta cut your piece a little bit big uh, and this is the first time I used it so we're gonna see how it works together and if it's something worth purchasing it was around 80 bucks but it's cheaper than <laughs> paying someone and, or even finding extra help and getting them on on track as well and all that jazz so The radius tool is not a fix all for everything, but when you're dealing with larger radiuses, uh, it'll get you close. <clears throat> uh, you know, the, these radius expand, they're, they're typically a eight to nine foot. This one in particular is small because it's on the side of a cabinet. Uh, so I got the bigger radius tool and they make a smaller one. And with practice, I'm sure it'll. You can dial it in. Uh, the the thing with this is is not even a just a flat surface radius. It it concaves all ways. It's like a, a bowl. So you know I have to give it a little bit of a break on uh, what I'm trying to use it for. But it did get me close, and I did have to make about eight or nine trim cuts afterwards, just dialing it in a little bit. I cut my piece two to two and a half inches oversized if I, when I do it again I will most definitely go four inches oversized just because um, there was a time where I thought maybe my piece was going to shorten so much that it wasn't going to work thank god it did so I'll probably switch to four inches oversized uh, until I get more comfortable with using the tool and uh, it is a tool the more you use it the better you get with it so um, it was a good purchase. So what I'm doing, I'm starting on the opposite side of uh, where I was building out. Uh, earlier this week just trying to get this box level as possible um, I don't want water to if the water does get on I don't want it to run backwards I, I'm gonna put a little bit of a an angle on it just a little bit so if any water does flow to flow down I had to uh, reroute some of the plumbing I changed my layout not much but just so it'll all be hidden and it won't run behind the composting toilet it'll run underneath the lip of the shower, underneath the cabinet, and then in the shower closet back there. Uh, but that's that. Alright, the Furion is hammering down. Uh, it was 73 in here just now, but uh, I was running in and out a little bit. Um, I didn't come in here for about an hour and it was down to 69 degrees, so it was cold. 
Uh, highly recommend the, the Furion Chill, I think is what it's called, <clears throat> with the thermostat. I got the one with the distribution block and all that where you can hook up the furnace, but um, they had the manual one too where you could just you know turn it on at the AC. But So I shot um, some video of me doing some framing or the end of the day the other day. And somehow my uh, lens got bumped over to f16 and uh, as you can imagine everything was super super dark and grainy and blotchy and I couldn't figure it out the last four clips and uh, I was doing some editing <clears throat> and I just picked up the camera again and, and I realized uh, what had happened so there's that but I'll go ahead and show you all now so this is what I was filming is the shower wall this is the the mixer wall and you all have seen some of the blooper reels on that <laughs> of it falling down on me and such and uh fun 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 project but today so what i did today just a little bit i did some plumbing went ahead and plumbed the sink in and uh i didn't film it because i was back here and I couldn't I couldn't fit me in the camera back there but as you know that was plugged off but I went ahead and ran the plumbing because I am framing this this section of the shower out and this was my solution to the vent I almost didn't put the add the vent in there but I to the to the um, the custom gray tank. This didn't have a gray tank in it. I added a gray tank, but and it's got another vent up there by the kitchen as well. But I went ahead and did it anyways, just because. Um, I'd rather do it now and not regret it later. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was already running, pl running plumbing to the sink. I didn't want to build out no crazy um, vent pipe with cement and all that stuff trying to bend that corner. So that's basically what I did there. And it seems so far to be holding up. I might put some Sikaflex sealing on there just so it don't pop loose, but I don't really see it going anywhere, but stay tuned on that. And I tested out the sink and it worked wonders. So I don't have much water left, but and it's probably dirty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That dirty water in there. That's what I water my flowers with, my plants with. So that's basically it. Voila! <laughs> it's a sink, it's working. Pretty sweet. And since I have since I added the custom um, 33 gallon gray tank which I did a video on I'll put a link uh, on the card or you can click the card and watch that video as well it's a pretty intricate gray tank I uh, definitely overbuilt it. That's okay. It'll never be seen and it's badass. So I hope you enjoyed that update. I'm pretty excited with it coming together uh, quite nicely. I'm going to um, upload a, another video and I'm literally holding a giant tripod in my hand right now because I left my gorilla pod with a friend. So I'm getting wore out and I'm starting to ramble. So until next time, peace.